ferry terminal in Tallinn. I'm about to begin my journey to Helsinki. Uh, it's a cold January. Uh, it's minus six today. Um, and there we go. Just to prove that I'm in Tallinn, not London. And the journey is going to take just over two hours, two and a half hours, I think. You shouldn't have to live like this. Like this? You just said you wanted to live here. Well, for me, it's a step up. It's like moving from Iceland to Finland. <laughs> Jerry, what do you, you want to you see the place or not? So I'm on the boat, or well the ferry, a little bit windy up here, but I just wanted to sort of illustrate. Um, it's about, it is still minus six. Uh, fortunately, it's the middle of the day. Sadly, um, there was a ferry incident between Tallinn and Stockholm, uh, where the entire ferry many years ago went down. Um, calm seas today, I'm, I'm gonna suggest that's not gonna happen today. Anyway, um, Helsinki, looking forward to it. in Helsinki. Just met the spawn of Edvard Munch's, uh, well the spawn of Edvard Munch. He looks like Edvard Munch's Scream's child to be honest, but no relation in terms of the artist. But here we go, let's go explore Helsinki. Stop 
So my first full day in Helsinki and I'm on my way to the design museum because Finnish design is world renowned. And look, a football pitch, but they've turned it into an ice rink. You're probably gonna see me slipping my ass right now. Yeah, it is an ice rink. Um, <laughs> it's um, right next to this beautiful Lutheran church, just on the way to the ice, on to the, uh, on the way to the design museum. Anyway, onwards, without slipping, of course. I decided to eat only half of the acid at first, but I spilled the rest on the sleeve of my red woolen shirt. What's the trouble? Winners in this brave new political environment is Linda Sarsour. She's a left-wing activist. She's now the face of Muslim identity politics in America. Of course, the Democratic Party loves her. But what does she actually believe? Assess it for yourself. I will respect the presidency, but I will not respect this president. Our number one and top priority is to protect and defend our communities. It is not to assimilate and to please any other people in authority. I hope that we, when we stand up to those who oppress our communities, that Allah accepts from us that as a form of jihad, that we are struggling against tyrants and rulers, not only abroad in the Middle East or in the other side of the world, but here in these United States of America where you have fascists and white supremacists and Islamophobes reigning in the White House. Arguing against assimilation. Why can't Democrats find a Muslim mascot who is not a total extremist? They probably could if they tried. Chair? No, he hasn't picked one yet. Dot. When Pam gets Michael's old chair, I get Pam's old chair. Then I'll have two chairs. Only one to go. Here I am in the design museum in the center of Helsinki. Um, basically, this exhibition on the top floor specializes in uh, design of California. Um, what we fail probably or what we probably many do realize is how much how inspiring californian design has been to all of us from the iphone that you may have in your hand as you watch this to the mac you might be using as you watch this to uh, all of the computers uh, chips that have basically been designed in silicon valley that enables you to watch this video 
Um, just there's a chair there that I spent way too many years on, uh, basically in offices in London and around the world, uh, causing me huge amounts of backache and but it allows the user to basically sit on the chair for extended amounts of time because of the ergonomic design of it. Uh, the surfboards were obviously designed in California. We all wished to get out of the office and basically there's a surfboard just there. And uh, it's something designing is incredibly inspiring. Um, also some of the political design that basically I've seen. Uh, the free speech movement in San Francisco to um, sadly the uh, pro-immigration movement with a picture of Linda Sassau, uh, that isn't inspiring in my mind. Um, how can someone that's pro-Sharia law be uh, pro-freedom? Pro doesn't add up. that would have been chosen last to succeed. We're from Venice. It was dirty, it was filthy, it was uh, paradise. For some reason, by doing something that everyone said was a waste of time, we ended up influencing kids all around the world. What I love about this exhibition over here, we got the sort of evolution of the skateboard uh, going all the way back from the original scooter, which you may remember from uh, yeah, when Marty McFly goes back to the future in 1955, that uh, scooter there basically appeared uh, first in 1950, and then it basically inspired the sort of generation of skateboards, many of which you will know, especially I, I know as I grew up with skateboards, to this, moving on to this, and then uh, basically the, Z, the, the, the Dogtown boys basically skated on this. Every kid from the 80s will remember this skateboard. Uh, not the design in itself, but the, the actual shape. Um, remember that with this, you'd often have a big sort of kicker here, and it was sort of front, you know, a little bit pointy at the front. And then, of course, in the 90s and noughties, we had this skateboard, uh, the one I sort of like, last skateboarded on, although it hasn't really much changed in this one. This is the last skateboard I ever owned. Um, but it's, it is quite inspiring to see this. And then, obviously, we've got the longboard, not quite as, uh, skillful as uh, the skateboards on the wall there, but it's still as fun. Obviously behind me the design of emoji. Which is your favorite emoji? Um, leave an emoji in the comments just to let me know which is your favorite. Welcome to our show. Hack the planet. Hack the planet. And for those late night hacks. One of my favorite uh, Finnish designers is Eero Anario. I probably say that completely wrong, but his round chair has always been one of these chairs. Um, I've always liked any time I've walked into a, someone's house and they have a round chair. It's the first chair I try to sit on.
with a with an unusual bird. It's an angry, angry bird. And why is it so angry? Because it wants to uh, destroy all of the uh, the pigs. Oh, uh, of course, the angry it birds. Is, it is an app. Yeah. It's a computer game. It Absolutely. is a successful Finnish export that we give to you to reflect Finland's place as a pioneer of software innovation. Indeed, I'm a huge fan. You have played it. Yes. 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 So I'm at this design museum and uh, downstairs is a designer called Anna Rehuin and the designer is actually behind me, she's the blonde lady just there with the yellow hair. Um, but this entire exhibition is basically highlighting some of her work uh, as a Finnish designer and some of her work is incredibly impressive. Uh, I certainly like some of the men's winter jackets and uh, I think she's got quite a following. She started her career in uh, basically Japan. And, did all the sewing and the, the you know, seamstress work herself. Probably uh, getting that completely wrong, but uh, Finland is very proud of this designer, Anna. There we go. <laughs> As I sit inside the ball chair and I spin around, which you can't see, if I turn it this way, you can. Um, how do I, had, how is the design museum for me? Um, 12 euros, so it's expensive. Six euros if you're a student, uh, so if you have a fake student card, um, it's gonna be half the price for you. Um, would I recommend it? Yes, I definitely would. Um, the California exhibition was incredibly uh, well, uh, well, play, well presented, and uh, what would I give it? I give it five out of five. Uh, definitely worth seeing. Five stars. Something I've noticed straight away, it reminds me of Oslo. Obviously this is a Scandinavian city and it is the capital of Finland. Um, but even the pathways just remind me of Oslo. I spent a lot of time in Oslo. It's a city I do miss. It's a city uh, of, of fond memories, but uh, and it's, this is equally as cold as Oslo. I, um, yeah, right now it's about minus seven. Yesterday was about minus nine. And it's the middle of the day, and it's almost dark. Um, obviously, if you want to get the full experience when it comes to visiting Finland, come in the summer, not in the winter like I have done. Although, of course, if you come in the winter and you head north, you will see the northern lights, potentially. you've got to entertain yourself when you're in the capital city of, uh, of Finland and uh, this is possibly one of the best uh, things about Finland, the rocking horse. Obviously the nightlife is a little bit better but this, this does do quite well and we're in the top of the hill, beautiful view behind us and there's one of the boats that takes you out of Helsinki onto elsewhere. <laughs>
with some salmon. Uh, it's like a ceviche instead of salmon. It's basically salmon finely cut up and sprinkled with onions, vegetables, all for five euros, which is pretty good value considering that Finland is not the cheapest country that I've recently been to. But this is a tasty, tasty meal. It's a great tiny recommend. Mm, very good, very good. to Finland would be complete without a visit to a sauna. The sauna was obviously invented in Finland so right in the center of the city there's a big place where there's a lot of saunas so one must go try it. Obviously I'm not going to take the camera in there but look, look, look there's a lady going in the pool over here. It's right behind me. That is cold. It's currently um, it's only about minus eight. It's cold. So just went inside the Russian Orthodox Church. Um, not allowed to take photos inside, but to be honest, wasn't actually allowed inside properly because uh, it's supposed to be a divine service on it, even though nobody was in there. Um, but beautiful church from the outside, and uh, one of two. This is an Orthodox Church, and right behind me is an Orthodox Church.
Uh, at the top of these very steep steps is the Helsinki Cathedral. From a distance, uh, it looks very impressive. Let's see if it's just as impressive up close. slash river um, Word of advice, uh, Finland is not cheap, especially when I've been comparing it to all the recent places I've been. Uh, 0.4 of a um, litre of beer Eight, eight euros ninety. Eight euros ninety. So uh, it's not cheap. Not everything in Finland is expensive. This is four euros, and I get to listen to the Pesh mode, so I'm happy. Sibylis uh, Park, um, right behind me is the composer Sibylis. Um, you may know him as the violinist, however, he's basically built a piece of art back in the 60s that sort of represents the organ, which is kind of strange given the violin is a long way away from what the organ is. He never composed anything about the organ, but he was a violinist. Sibylis Park, usually, you'll be full of uh, tourists on cruise ships, they disembark and there'd be thousands of people here basically snapping pictures. But lucky for me, no one's here. So I picked a cold day to come here, but I, I picked a nice day because nobody is here. Um, nothing worse than going somewhere and it's full of tourists. However, I'm sure, I'm sure it's uh, a sight to behold when there's lots of tourists as well. Anyway, uh, a little bit of a walk from the center, but I recommend it.
Hey, so it's uh, three o'clock already and it's just about to get dark. Um, been a nice weekend so far. Uh, very much enjoyed it. Um, just a little bit more to explore. I'm uh, changing locations uh, because I wanted to see more of the north side now. So I'm going to basically sort of move my bags and change locations. When you're in a city for a few more, you know, uh, more than a few days, it's best to sort of move around a little bit. That way you get a better sort of idea of what the city's about. stood here in the um, Ham Museum, which is the Helsinki uh, Art Museum. Basically that's what Ham stands for. Very obvious really. Um, interesting uh, museum, a lot of, lot of amazing sculptures, um, some portraits, uh, some art by one of the, uh, by one of Finland's finest artists. Uh, 10 euros though to get in, so when you come from the UK where doesn't actually cost anything to uh, enter the museums. Ten euros does seem a bit steep. However, it is a nice place. Uh, think of it as a sort of very small version of the Tate Modern, and uh, you've pretty much hit the nail on the head. It is uh, it has some exceptional fine pieces, but um, ten euros. So if you're on a budget, a little bit steep. <laughs> What I like about uh, Helsinki and their ice rinks, uh, if you have a pair of skates, you can just rock up. You don't need to pay. It's sort of a, put your skates on, what are they going to do? If you want to rent skates, of course, you have to pay. But this should be a lesson there. Uh, imagine trying to do that in London, outside the Natural History Museum or in Canary Wharf. It just wouldn't happen. Um, but it's kind of nice. We've got an ice rink here, right next to the main station. A lot of snow for the kids to play in. Right in the main square. It's nice. All right, so this is not my phone, but check this out. I can open it with my fingerprint. 
Now, the person whose phone this is, open it with your fingerprint. No, no. Just do it, do it, do it so I can see. Go on. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> now I'm going to do it with my fingerprint. I can do it with my fingerprint. What the fuck? It's ridiculous. <laughs> So here I am, a cold January uh, afternoon, and I found myself in this reptile um, park, and uh, the name just here. <laughs> and what is amazing, this place has every deadly snake you could possibly imagine, and some of the rarest reptiles I've ever seen. I mean, for example, this guy just behind me, a muster. The problem is the lack of English in this place. It's uh, supposedly Varanus uh, Kamani. Now, according to the stats here, there's less than 15 of these in the world. I mean, this is an extremely rare creature, and I mean, there's a lizard back there uh, where there's thought to be less than 200 in the wild. And I mean, this is a phenomenally interesting place. Um, 10 euros for students, 15, uh, 13 euros for adults. It's, uh, if you appreciate what reptiles and wildlife, this is a phenomenally good place. I mean, it's not massive. Um, I think I'm halfway around it at the moment. I could be surprised, but um, I, every single display is just, there's, there's something amazing inside here, free cabinet. Obviously, I would prefer these things to be in the wild, but the reality is you can't um, have the, a lot of these animals now in the wild. Their habitats have been destroyed. Um, their habitats have been destroyed by man. And uh, the only safe place for them is 
places like this. Not ideal, I know, but uh, it's better that they are here uh, in a sort of incredibly clean environment um, and well looked after than basically being eaten by locals or being all their habitat being cut down by people with chainsaws and then burnt alive. Um, this has been one of the highlights of Helsinki so far. I'm very impressed. So this beautiful lizard uh, from Australia uh, is sniffing me through the glass. As you can see, there's a little bit of a gap here and it's using its tongue to basically sort of sniff me out. Um, clearly this is a non-shy lizard because um, there's a fair few, it's the only, it's the only uh, cabinet I've seen where there's a few scratches. I imagine that actually the scratches are on the other side. So it's, it's this guy scratching with his amazing claws and he's an incredibly inquisitive little fellow. I mean, the, the eyes are insanely beautiful, and that tongue. I mean, he's, right now he's, he's sniffing me, and with his tongue he's just sort of uh, trying to figure out what sort of, what am I? Well, he probably realizes what I am. These, these are intelligent animals. But am I a threat? Am I, am I friendly to him? Am I potential prey to him? Um, but he's, he's inquisitive, he, he's, in, he's as inquisitive about me as I am about him. Um, but just looking into his eyes, he's, I mean, when you look into any animal's eyes, there's a connection there. And that is a beautiful animal.
right behind me is the only sad thing I find about this place. Uh, beautiful, beautiful bird, but and incredibly smart. There's a lot of interaction going on here, um, playing with its toys, but at the same time, because of its natural habitat in Africa, it's being decimated, and it is now in the, it is now in captivity. Although I'm convinced this bird could have a, a bigger captivity. This is the saddest thing about this place. Uh, the reptiles, fine. The bird, this bird is screaming for more space. Uh, so that was my tour of the Tropicario, and I have to say, this is truly an amazing place. Um, we have some of the deadliest snakes, some of the deadliest uh, reptiles uh, you could possibly imagine. I mean, everything from the black mamba to the green mamba to Komodo dragons to rattlesnakes. Uh, it is phenomenal. Um, the, uh, like I say, the only negative is uh, seeing the birds in in its little prison. Uh, it's a clearly very intelligent animal, but if you ignore that, because um, it's clear how clean all of the tanks are, they are doing a phenomenal job. Uh, this is, yeah, this is worth 10 euros, and it's incredibly insightful. And lucky for me, the majority of my time here, uh, I've been the only person here. Uh, there was, I think there was a little kid here earlier making a little bit of noise, but once they left, complete silence and all I can hear is the animals and uh, the guy, obviously the bird that keeps making noise, uh, although I haven't yet got him on camera making noise, which is a shame. Maybe he's going to make this sort of like a goodbye to me right now, let's see. Bye bye. <laughs> anyway, uh, I give this place five stars. I was uh, asking if this was the uh, Finnish skydiving club, which, judging by your response, I uh, assume it's not. So, uh, hey, so, guys, listen. A very cold day, as per usual. It is January, after all. I think it's about uh, minus six today. Um, but I'm reminded as I, um, I walk past this shop, look what it's called, it's called Fargo. Uh, it's possibly one of my favourite films uh, by the Coen brothers, probably, the, probably their best film actually. Uh, correct me in the comments if you disagree on that one, but um, I still haven't seen the TV series. I hear uh, Ewan McGregor's supposed to be good, that's one for me to uh, watch when I get back to civilization. Well, 
my civilization. I know Finland is civilization. Um, but today is as cold as Fargo, and I know a lot of the people originally from Fargo land, uh, which I think is Minnesota, uh, originally came from Scandinavia, so maybe there's a connection here. Shit. Now, I'm sitting here driving, doing all the driving, man, whole fucking way from Brainerd, driving, just trying to chat, you know, keep our spirits up, fight the boredom of the road, and you can't say one fucking thing just in the way of conversation. Oh, fuck it. I don't have to talk either, man. See how you like it. Just total fucking silence. Two could play at that game, smart guy. We'll just see how you like it. Total silence. Basically, I'm in the hipster area of uh, Helsinki at the moment. It's just kind of north of the uh, center, north of the railway tracks, across the river, and you get to sort of where the hipsters are. How do you know it's hipsters? Tattoo shops, coffee shops that are called Shoreditch, my place where I'm from, and record stores. All the giveaway signs that it's Hipsterville, but apparently on Monday, which today is, none of these places are open. Things are only open Tuesday to Friday around here. Uh, it seems Monday is a bit of a non-day in Helsinki. Um, three museums I've now tried to go to are closed. Um, this is quite difficult when you're walking around. It's now currently minus 10. Um, I'm freezing. <laughs> uh, yesterday, I managed to walk 11 and a half, 12 miles almost, according to my uh, health app on my phone. Oh. Uh, today, I'm not sure I'll manage that with the cold. It's minus 10, it's minus 10 uh, without wind. And when the wind picks up, as you can probably hear in the microphone, it gets a lot colder. Uh, this is the sea. Just to give you some perspective on how cold it is. Well, it's kind of the estuary to the sea. The sea uh, is basically just in front of me. And sort of estuary, sort of river, inlets. Uh, I'd imagine it's sort of, uh, depending on the tide, will depend on if it's freshwater or seawater. But as you can see, some people have been ice skating. It's kind of, that's how cold it is. things you can do when you're in Helsinki is obviously uh, visit their music center. Now this uh, received a lot of EU money, um, but it's one of the better things the EU have ever done. Although it, a lot of it was uh, from, the majority of it was from uh, Finnish taxpayers and uh, donat donors, I think. I think it cost 190 million this complex. If you can imagine um, uh, the, the Barbican except to make it beautiful, then you might be, you might be uh, sort of close to imagining what it's like and the nice thing is the the area is uh, circular so you can sort of even if you don't have a ticket you kind of kind of look in and you see what's going on um, but they've got a lot of um, they got a lot of musical gigs on at the moment um, not cheap though have to, has to be said uh, and tonight sadly is sold out so I won't be watching unless they said they say they Unless someone hands a ticket in, but it seems unlikely. Monday is not a day to go to museums. Fourth museum I've tried today, and 
it is closed. And I thought a trip to any city would not be complete without a trip to the Natural History Museum. Uh, as you've probably seen in a lot of my videos, I tend to visit the Natural History Museum in each city as much as possible. Um, I heard good things about this one. This is a moose and a couple of giraffes on the balcony. But as per usual, it's closed. Um, so advice, if you're looking to do all the museums, do them uh, Tuesday to Sunday. Don't try Monday. Uh, tomorrow I won't get a chance as I'm uh, flying off. But it's a shame really, but oh well. Uh, so that's my trip to Helsinki. Thank you for joining me on, the, on this journey. Um, thanks for watching right away, all the way to the end of this video. Uh, it's been a long video, I know. Although, um, I keep trying to edit these videos smaller. There's a lot of footage that doesn't make the cut. Um, Helsinki, uh, would I recommend it? Definitely. Um, perceptions of Finland before I came here. Good design, nice people, the home of the sauna, uh, the home of the Moomin, um, Mika Hakkinen. Um, have my perceptions been changed? No. Um, I had. I, I always assumed the country would be um, with, uh, filled with good people, good design. Um, what I what I was very surprised with was just how stylish everything is. It's a very modern place. Um, it's a beautiful city. Um, I do want to come back in the summer. Um, simple reason: most of the days. Uh, in January, um, I only seem to get about three to three hours, maybe four hours of daylight, if I'm lucky. Uh, most of the time, it's been um, if it's been clouded over, it feels like it gets dark a lot, a lot uh, earlier. Um, but yes, I definitely come back, um, I'm, I, and I'd like to see the rest of Finland. Anyway, so if you like this video, click subscribe here, just somewhere around here, and uh, hopefully you can join me on another journey. Till next time.